Hi everyone, this is Dr. Reema Ranka, your women's health physiotherapist and a certified childbirth educator. So today with us, we have the pioneer of IVF sitting right next to us who is going to give us so much information on our IVF. She has 38 years of experience in the field of IVF and also the first ICSI baby in Southeast Asia was with the hands of Dr. Firuza Parekh. So please, I would like to welcome her to our channel. And also she is the director of Well Women Center in Dr. HN Reliance Hospital. So bam, bomb welcome to you. And uh, I'm so glad that you've come to our channel today to explain everyone so much about IVF because there is so much myths, there is so much stigma, fear. Everyone nowadays is having fertility issues. There are so many fertility issues that they are not spoken about either out of fear or either out of hesitation. And so on behalf of all my followers, I would love to ask you many questions on IVF. So welcome to the channel, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reema. I think today is a very auspicious day because it centers around World IVF Day that signifies the beginning of IVF when Louis Brown was born. Well, I was just an intern student, I would say, when she was born. And that kind of drove me to believe that, yes, it is possible to have this kind of technology even in India. So that was the beginning of my 38 years of experience and joy that IVF has given me as well as to those people struggling with infertility. Absolutely, I think you're a godmother for so many of them who have, you know, waiting to conceive for years. So IVF is really a boon for those who are dealing with infertility, unsaid infertility. I think it's amazing. So my first question will be, what are the different types of IVF? Because, you know, there are so many fancy terms that you read on the internet. So what are the different types of IVF? So to give you a little introduction about IVF, IVF is nothing but assisting nature to bring the egg and the sperm together. What cannot be done naturally because of certain deficiencies either in the reproductive system or the immune system or in the sperm is possible because of IVF. So it is an assistance to nature to bring the egg and the sperm together. It all started way back in the 1950s actually although the first IVF baby was born only in 1978. So that was a long time ago. But today, the science of IVF has moved by leaps and bounds. You just don't have plain IVF, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, MC for those men who have abnormal sperm. But now there are offshoots. We are able to treat genetic diseases in fertile couples by what is known as pre-implantation genetic testing. We have genetic counselling, we have psychological counselling, we have the ability of using artificial intelligence to tell us which sperm is good, which egg is good, which embryo will give us the best pregnancy. So I think Dr. Reema, we have moved a very far place in uh, creating life and helping infertile couples. Correct. But I think the fear that comes with IVF is it's a lot of medications, a lot of injections. So how much true is that? So unfortunately, the information that is spread is not always authentic. In fact, in a book that I've written on IVF, there are a lot of myths that I have busted. And some of the common myths are that our IVF is unnatural. IVF only gives female babies. IVF cannot be repeated, IVF causes cancers, IVF causes ab abnormalities in babies. Right. So I would like to break some of these myths that by and large IVF today is a very safe procedure. If done with professional hands, it can give you very high success rates and it also gives you healthy babies. So today I would like to tell the audience that IVF is actually one of the most natural things in nature. It is called ART, Assisted Reproductive Technology. But I think the next thing that the female thinks is, I'm going to an IVF clinic, next month I will be pregnant. So how long does this procedure actually take yeah. or what mental preparation should one walk in with? Yeah. So Dr. Iman, this is a very relevant question. One has to be extremely realistic about IVF. In fact, 
when we have the first interview with a couple and i always insist that the husband and the wife the two partners come together i always end my interview or my counseling with couples to tell them to be realistic about ivf because you know there is a thing that ivf works 100% and this myth is carried on by many people we are here to give hope to couples but we have to be realistic so as per the age of the woman as per the physical condition as per the lifestyle conditions of the couple what are the other comorbidities what is the stress level in the couple it's very important to be genuine when you are giving statistics it's also very important to tell not only success stories but also failures you know a couple may want to hear that when will i have my baby <laughs> yes. so i can understand the plight of couples but the realistic picture the professional picture the ethical picture must always be put forward and one must not give false hopes to couple if you feel that ivf is unlikely to work then let's be honest let's put it on the platform let's tell them that okay your chances are 5% or 20% or even 60% and then it's for the couple to decide whether such a situation is viable for them so in general what is the success rate success rate will depend on many factors as i enumerated the age of the woman is very important her hormone profile is very important there is one hormone called anti mullerian hormone yes. amh and we are seeing that amh is falling in young indian women so lower the amh less will be her chances higher the amh and within the norms of the age if the amh falls in that norm then the chances are better if there is a male factor and it is something that cannot be changed then the chances are lower if there is a genetic condition the chances are lower if somebody is diabetic or hypertensive then we have to work on those conditions before we do i do you know that if a woman and a man's vitamin d level is low if the b complex levels the vitamin b12 is low if the folic acid is low then the chances come down if the eggs are not vitalized again the chances come down such a vital information guys vitamin d being low vitamin b12 being low which is such small things that i think we can take care of in our daily diet daily nutrition lifestyle and it's so overlooked upon that these small things can also contribute to fertility so one more very famous myth is they will be transferring lot of embryos and you will have only twin not triplet babies so everybody thinks twin not triplet pregnancy means it's ivf how true is that so first of all when ivf started because the success rates were low there was a tendency to put in more embryos but today the technology is advanced along with the help of pre implantation genetic testing where we have the ability to transfer only one genetically normal embryo so over the last 8 to 10 years or maybe more we are now at our center only transferring or trying to make sure that we transfer a single blastocyst and preferably tested with pre implantation genetic testing because what that does it decreases the ttp the ttp is the time to pregnancy if i have the option of putting in one genetically tested blastocyst that is likely to give me a very high success rate that is very good but still what if you have multiple pregnancies uh i would not encourage couples to try to have twins or triplets you know many times we are uh, when when they come for a first consult the question or the desire is doc can i have two embryos put in then i'll finish having two babies in one <laughs> yes. sitting and then i'll be done so having multiple pregnancy can become difficult not only for the mother but for the baby because it can result in premature deliveries sometimes difficulty in delivery the mother can have high blood pressure she can develop diabetes so i would urge the audience to try and restrict in having one single normal pregnancy because then you are able to take the pregnancy all the way through term right which is right. very important yeah. for the mother 
and the baby because twin pregnancies are obviously more difficult and you know they put a lot of burden on the woman who is already going through a lot of hormonal changes in IVF so the question uh, regarding that is how many side effects are there because there are people who say IVF will give you cancer it will take away your life it will give you cirrhosis you will have a miserable time post delivery and your body will shut down because of the hormones so what is the truth behind this so most of these things that you enumerated are really myths ivf as i told you right in the beginning is a natural it you are assisting nature to get pregnant true hormones are given but please remember these are the same hormones that are being produced in your pituitary gland which is resides in the brain these are in fact very refined hormones that are available today a combination of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone what we call fsh and lh yes some women who are very sensitive in their bodies may feel slightly bloated some may have mood swings some may feel very tired and lethargic but look at the brighter side if you have a positive attitude you know that taking all these hormones are likely to give you a baby a healthy child so although there are some little downs which are very temporary i i'm a very positive person i always look at the brighter side of things so look at the brighter side there is a beautiful rainbow shining there waiting for you in the form of a baby but these hormones will not affect the baby right the baby will be healthy yeah so by and large hormones will not affect the embryo yes if hormones are given in a higher concentration or if the woman suffers from pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome and if the hormones are not titrated they can cause a condition called ohss ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome but this can be prevented and also if it occurs can be managed effectively but it does not make the baby like they say you know the ivf babies are weaker and all that so all these are myths which need to be busted which need to be broken ivf babies there are multiple longitudinal studies done which show that for some reason because they are so precious they are more cared for you know they get the best of education True. the parents time the love and affection not that naturally can see babies don't and i can vouch for that i have three we have three and they are all very loved and looked after but yes studies have shown that uh, ivf babies do not perform any differently uh, in schools they have very good milestone unless of course they are born premature for any reason okay so one more uh, question i would like to ask you here is like you have treated many eminent personalities ma'am has done ivf for personalities like mrs neeta ambani she's done it for amir khan tushar kapoor so many people think that is ivf only for the privileged or can normal people common people also approach or go for this there has to be equity and equality in all medical procedures and access of the couple to technology is extremely important no matter what the socio economic class since you brought up mrs neeta ambani at this point it was and it is mrs ambani's vision to create a healthcare system which is for all and it was her vision that enabled the starting the initiation of the well women center where we not only do ivf but we offer holistic care in aesthetics in adolescent medicine in endometriosis in aging women in reproductive health to look after all facets of life along the lifespan of a woman whether it is reproductive care care for rejuvenation looking after holistic care so i think it is people like mrs ambani people like mr amir khan and kiran rao people like tushar who break barriers and who then become the icons to promote reproductive health care in our exactly. country i know many people you know relate to them that if they can do it i think Absolutely. we can also go for it and i agree with you that ivf should be more accessible so that every person can have it in uh, my practice i don't see too many celebrities and i love it when somebody who is comes from a very economic background where they have made a struggle and i feel very 
uh, satisfied when I able to help such couples. So I think that was such a beautiful insight on IVF and we have so much information with us. So stay tuned with us on part two. And if you have any questions regarding IVF or for Dr. Firuza ma'am, please put it in the comment section and we will have it answered for you in part two, which will be much more informative. And if you are someone struggling for fertility, I think you have landed on the right page and we would help you with that. Thank you.